I like Italy. It's a romantic place for me. Before the cruise, I was thinking, I wish I wasn't going there on my own. I dated a girl here once, and it's just not quite the same as going solo. Over the last few days, I've admired all the couples I've seen touring around. And today, uh, I don't know. This is the first time I'm doing this with someone else. Really? And uh, I don't know if I like it. It is interesting how universal forces, or at least forces I'm not directly aware of, can line things up for us. As Abraham says, orchestrating people, circumstances, and events into our lives that match our point of attraction. And by the way, did I attract you or did you attract me? Oh, both. You see, I want a fulfilling romantic relationship right now. But according to Abraham's Law of Attraction teachings, if I don't have it, it must mean I'm not ready for it. I have to first be a vibrational match to the ideal relationship I'm looking for. And in the meantime, I just have to trust my inner being, that it knows what's best, that it knows exactly how to get what I want and how to navigate around all my resistances, setting things up in the best possible timing. But why should I trust my inner being? Now, I obviously wouldn't want to be in a relationship if it makes me miserable. Even if a potential partner seems perfect on paper, checks all the boxes, if I could know ahead of time that being with her would make for an unhappy and unfulfilling relationship, I wouldn't want to be in that relationship. As Rupert Spiro would say, it's not the relationship that I want, it's happiness that I want. And I think the relationship will provide that. Regardless of the reason, according to Abraham's Law of Attraction teachings, this desire has an attraction force that should bring it into my life. But at the same time, my desire for happiness above all else should also have attraction power. And many other things in my life right now provide that happiness that a romantic relationship could interfere with. Like my current lifestyle, making these videos, and my relationship with my son. <laughs> oh, there you are. Is it okay if I talk about relationships? Okay. Now maybe certain relationships wouldn't be compatible with that, with my life as it is right now. But does my inner being know that? Is it really working on my behalf? And how can I know that? And what is that inner being exactly? Calling it that makes it seem like it's an autonomous conscious entity, that it can think and act on its own. Is there consistent evidence for this type of independent being affecting my life? And then reveal right there. This is actually the first time I'm narrating my shots as I'm doing them. <laughs> and uh, I should keep this in there in the final edit. Even if I can't know exactly what it is, thinking of it as a being with agency, with an organizing and creative force, can help inspire confidence in it. But at the same time, those unknown creative forces may just be the law of attraction naturally and instinctively at work. Maybe it's just that natural force influencing things according to the balance of my desires, according to the balance of my thoughts, and which ones are predominant. This is where the theory of mental modules can come into play. I got it from the book Why Buddhism is True and it describes competing modules of survival instincts and desires, with one set of desires competing against another set. Any choice we make is based on which set wins out. So even if I have competing modules of what I want, if I have conflicting desires, like my desire to make these videos and live this type of lifestyle and be in a relationship, it's a balance of those desires that the law of attraction is working off of, according to Abraham. But when things don't seem to work out short term, it's easy for us to doubt it or to blame this supposed inner being or infinite intelligence, God, natural forces, or whatever we may want to call it. Where's my stuff, as Abraham would say? Or how do I get my money out of the vortex and into the bank? 
my partner out of my head and into my bed? Is there an antagonist to my inner being, like the concept of a devil or demons? According to the law of attraction, negative thoughts have attraction power too. Are the positive and negative beings fighting it out? I don't know, and maybe there's no way of knowing for sure what hierarchy of beings or conscious agents actually exist beyond the physical. Which is your good side? Show me your good side. <laughs> your hair is beautiful, by the way, in the shot. Thank you. It's just uh, naturally flowing in the frame on the side. And ah, see, it's a little bit loud over here. I gotta wait to get to another quiet spot. Okay. But I lost you. Uh, it's a second date, or I think it's I think it's appropriate. Oh God, we hit a crowd while I was saying, You know how embarrassing this is? This is very difficult for me to do in public in front of the crowd and with you. I'm so embarrassed. I know, I, you I'm should not... be. This is how I feel all the time. Last thoughts. Okay, last, okay. last, last. Okay, okay. But when things do work out, it can really seem like there's someone or something that's looking out for us, that has our best interests in mind and causing everything to work out in precise timing and harmony. And that can very well be called an inner being. I like vlogging mm. with you. It was good, right? That's nice. So that's my closing. Actually, no, this is. Like and comment if this resonated with you and subscribe below to follow me on my journey. See you next time. What? Okay, I'm not doing this ever with you again. Signing the road!